Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. First, let me thank uh, Bart Gordon and this committee for the extraordinary work that they've done. <clears throat> and even though all of us are going to get an opportunity to say to the chairperson um, our thanks uh, for his efforts um, here in Congress, I'd like to uh, just personally um, uh, thank him uh, uh, not only for the Cybersecurity Enhancement Act of 2009, uh, but for substantial and substantive legislation throughout the course of his career. Um, I'm pleased to offer this um, amendment uh, to address cybersecurity workforce concerns and advance the de development of technical standards. If we're going to do that, we need to consider all of the different innovative opportunities out there. Now, I was disappointed, though, to discover the significant gender and racial disparities in the cybersecurity industry. We know cyberspace touches practically everything and everyone, and yet I find it mind-boggling that we haven't made more of an effort to include everyone in protecting it. Women now constitute 50.7 percent of the U.S. population as of 2008, and the U.S. Census Bureau found that only 14 percent of women pursue professional careers in science or technology. Other underrepresented groups mentioned in this amendment include African Americans, Hispanics, and Native Americans. All of these groups have historically been un underrepresented in scientific and engineering occupations. The U.S. Census Bureau recorded African Americans, Hispanics, and Native Americans as 28.2 percent of the U.S. population in 2008, and yet these groups only represent a mere 10 percent of the science and technology industry. In order to protect cyberspace, we need a strong vision and leadership. Both will require changes in policy, technology, education, and perhaps law. This bill will be recruiting the best and brightest, and we must ensure these opportunities are available to all Americans. This amendment will address existing and potential racial and gender disparities in the industry. The first part of the amendment deals with the section of the, on the cybersecurity workforce assessment. In this section, we require the President to transmit to Congress a report analyzing the cybersecurity workforce needs of the federal government. If we're going to take a look, a good look, at the sources and availability <coughs> excuse me, of cybersecurity talent in our country, then we must also take an even more vigilant look at how we are including the talent of minorities. According to a 1995 report of the Council, Quote, limited access <clears throat> is the first hurdle faced by women seeking industrial jobs in science and engineering. And while progress has been made in recent years, common recruitment and hiring practices that make extensive use of traditional networks often overlook the available pool of women. Madam Chair, it is truly embarrassing that 15 years later, we find ourselves having made such little progress on this issue. The second part of the amendment adds a requirement to include representatives from minority-serving institutions on the Cybersecurity University Industry Task Force in order to conduct a national dialogue on cybersecurity and develop more public awareness of the threat and risk. We need an integrated approach, one that includes a diverse industry that can tackle our vulnerabilities while also meeting our economic needs and national security requirements. Madam Chairman, the United States needs a comprehensive framework to ensure a coordinated response uh, and recovery by the government, the private sector, and our allies to a significant incident or threat. This amendment ensures that the process is accessible to our nation's diverse talent. In addition to thanking the committee and especially um, uh, Chairman Gordon, I'd like to thank our colleague Congressman Ciro Rodriguez of Texas for co-sponsoring this amendment, and I urge my colleagues to support this effort.